Alright, today I'm going to give you guys a detailed look at this uh, NECA figure, and it is uh, Phantom of the Opera, based on the really old movie um, by, well, it's from uh, Paramount, uh, I think it's their Universal Monster uh, series, this is based off of that, and this is the color version, because uh, all the other characters I have are in color, so, um, so this is uh, one that I have to pick up, which is nice, I like that. And then here's the back of the box. It shows a couple of pictures of the Phantom of the Opera. Really cool. I think they did a fantastic job with it. But uh, let's take a look at the figure itself. All right, and here we have Phantom of the Opera outside of packaging and uh, the cloth outfit he has on right now. Uh, the cloth uh, outer coat he has on right now. And then um, here's the other accessories. Uh, comes with a fedora right there. And then uh, I guess this is the mask version of Phantom of the Opera. And then here are the unmasked head. They are really, really cool. Uh, I think, man, NECA did a fantastic job with these. They look really, really good. And then also comes with a cane and uh, four extra hands. And that's everything. That's all you really need, actually. And, uh, yeah, let's take a look at the figure itself now. Uh, let's get a look at that head sculpt. Really, really nice. And then, uh, there's the outer coat, which I'll remove in a second. Yeah, in order to uh, put it on or remove, you have to take the head off in order to do that. But there's the rest of him for now. Alright, so, before I remove the outer coat just want to show you guys what it looks like from the back so there's no wire running through it there is a wire running through the front portion right there so and then the collar piece is actually uh, plastic rubbery plastic so like I said in order to remove the uh, the outer coat first you have to do is pop the head off pop that off and here you can see there's a little string that's running across the um, the collar section. Then you push the arms back in order to remove this jacket. So here it is. And there's the collar piece right here, rubbery plastic. It's nice. It's nice a uh, nice piece for the Phantom of the Opera. I like it. Let me tuck this back in. Okay, so let's put this away and let's take a look at Phantom of the Opera with the. Uh, well, let's put the human, well, the mask head on for now, okay? So, pop this on. Is it all the way in? Yeah, it looks like it's all the way in. And there it is. Let me push the camera up a little bit. There you go. So, you guys see the top of his head. And then here's the fedora. And there you go, there's uh, Phantom of the Opera. I think, uh, to me, the hat looks a little big. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just me or if that's how he is supposed to be, but it does look a little big on him. Um, here, again, I'm holding the cane right there. Hold on to this cane right there. And um, yeah. Not sure why his mouth is covered up like that, uh, but uh, here's a good look at that head sculpt right there. So if you remove the hat, you can see there's a line right here. I guess that's supposed to resemble the mask where it ends right there, and then the mouthpiece. I, again, I'm not sure what that is about. Uh, I am uh, planning on watching that film probably uh, either tonight or tomorrow. Not sure yet, but uh, yeah, really cool. So let me pop this head off and pop in another head sculpt. Well, before I show you, uh, before I pop that in, you can see the mouth is open right there. Uh, the teeth, it's a separate piece, so that is nice. I like that. So it looks more natural this way. Look, look some, uh, it looks a little more realistic. With the teeth and the uh, and the uh, and the tongue, a separate piece from the uh, the lips section. Yeah, so I like that the fact that they did it in a couple of pieces 
instead of just one giant piece. So let me pop this on him. So there's Phantom of the Opera. Ooh, getting ready to hit someone with it. I'm not sure why he's doing that. And uh, I like to come over. <laughs> Look, he has a ball spot right there, and uh, his hair is actually combed over both sides. They're really nice. The head sculpt is fantastic. Really, really good. Now, as far as articulation is concerned, head you already saw has a ball joint. There's nothing around the base of the neck though. There's a hinge uh, right there for the for the shoulder, and then single jointed elbow but it can rotate left and right because it's just pegged into the bicep section and then the wrist can go in and out and then as for the uh, torso let's see there is a ball joint right up here in here but it is hindered by the uh, the the outfit he has on so it's hard to move it's more just left and right not so much uh, abdominal or arching or anything like that so there's a ball hinge joint for the hips kind of like uh, pretty much for all the necker stuff necker stuff then uh, ooh, careful can't go up about that much and coming back down the knees single joint be careful these tends to break easily if you can uh, if you can bend it um, I would suggest using a hair dryer just uh, blow it around this section a little bit to soften up the plastic so it's just easier for you to bend the knee joint and then ankle I believe it's a ball joint right there it does pivot a little bit left and right so yeah so not a whole lot I mean most likely you're just gonna have them standing anyway just uh, some minor poses like moving the arms and stuff that's already going to give you a lot of cool poses. Uh, so, yeah, look at that. Really good looking Phantom of the Opera. I think that's a good pose right there. So intense and scary. I think with the proper lighting, uh, you do it uh, dark with harsh shadow and shadowing, then um, he's going to look fantastic too. But uh, for reviewing, I'm just going to get everything all bright so you guys can see all the detailing on this figure. So let's get a closer look at that head sculpt. I already showed you this one. Let's look at the other head sculpts here. Okay. So this is one that's looking off to one side as well. It doesn't this one does not have a separate mouthpiece. Separate teeth and a tongue section. It's just one sculpt. Still fantastic looking head sculpt. And then you already saw this one, but here's another look at it. You kind of see the teeth underneath it because this is a translucent piece of plastic right there. That's nice. And then here's another one uh, looking more um, vanilla looking head sculpt. It's looking straight and let's say one piece. And then lastly, we have this one. It's kind of smiley head sculpt, looking towards one side. And this one is also a one piece. So I guess the only one, the only one with the uh, two piece would be this one, because this one has a really large open mouth section. So I guess in order to to get it better, they decide to go with uh, two pieces instead. This is what it looks like. Up close, really good. So yeah, overall, I am very, very happy with this line. This, these uh, Universal Monsters, uh, I really, really like it. Uh, these are fantastic figures. They all turned out really good. Uh, let's see, the only other ones, let's see, all we have left is, uh, I think the Blue Lagoon the creature from the Blue Lagoon and uh, I'm not sure who else I think that might be it all the figures uh, from this line at least the ones that I want to collect 
So yeah. So there you go. Uh, this guy is gonna set you back about 36, 38, somewhere around there. And to me, it's totally worth it with the amount of head sculpts that this figure comes with. Uh, a total of five head sculpts, and you got cloth good. And a hat, a cane, and a couple of hands. I think uh, you're going to have a lot of fun with this one if you're interested in the Universal Monsters. And uh, so there you go. Thanks for watching.